Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to work through an idealized projectile motion problem in which we have a projectile, possibly a baseball or a softball or a stone, that at the instant shown has a velocity of magnitude 10 meters per second and a direction of the velocity that is 60 degrees above the horizontal. Imagine at this instant the projectile is 10 meters above the level ground. Given this information, we're asked to figure out the impact velocity of this projectile. That is, what is the velocity of this projectile as it hits the ground? We're also asked to figure out the horizontal travel. That is, how far does this projectile travel horizontally from the time shown here until the time of impact? Now, I've said idealized projectile motion problem because we're going to ignore air resistance. Air resistance, as I noted in a previous video, makes a highly variable, complicated contribution to the acceleration of a real projectile. So in order to turn this problem into something we can actually solve, we're going to ignore air resistance. If we ignore air resistance, then the only acceleration we have is the acceleration due to gravity. That's straight downward near the surface of the Earth with a magnitude of 9.8 meters per second per second. I'll write that right here. Speaking of constant acceleration, I've written out the component equations of motion for a constant acceleration component right here. In particular, I've written them out for a constant a sub y. In the case of a constant a sub x, for example, we could get those equations by replacing the y everywhere with an x. All right, let's get started. In order to carry out this calculation, we first need to establish an appropriate coordinate system, and then we need to take our key given vector information and express it in terms of components along those coordinates. It makes a lot of sense to choose the direction of one of our axes to be aligned with or anti-aligned with the acceleration. If we do that, then the acceleration component along all other axes will be zero. So I'm going to choose up to be my positive y direction, and I'm going to choose my positive x direction to be horizontal in the plane of the motion to your right. Let me just summarize that coordinate system right here. With this choice of coordinate system, the acceleration due to gravity is entirely in the negative y direction and not at all in the x direction. So a sub x will be equal to 0, and a sub y will be equal to negative 9.8 meters per second per second. Now let's take our initial velocity vector and break it up into x and y components. The x component will go to about here, and the y component out to about here. I'm going to erase this little bit. So here's the x component of the initial velocity. Here's the y component of the initial velocity. The zero subscript means at time zero, and we'll imagine that the ball is right here at time zero. All right, if we take the y component of the initial velocity and put it right here, we can see that all of this forms a right triangle. The magnitude of the initial velocity is the hypotenuse. The y component of the initial velocity is the side opposite to the 60 degree angle. The x component of the initial velocity is adjacent to the 60 degree angle. Adjacent goes with cosine, opposite goes with sine. So v sub x zero will be magnitude, 10 meters per second, times the cosine of 60 degrees. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, so that gives us 5 meters per second. Meanwhile, since v sub y zero is the side opposite to the 60 degree angle, v sub y zero will be 10 meters per second times the sine of 60 degrees which equals 8.66 meters per second. Now, one quick comment on our coordinate system. If instead I had chosen down to be the positive y direction, then the acceleration due to gravity would be in the positive y direction, and this would be positive. However, this would then be in the negative y direction, and so this would have come out negative. I chose up, however, as the positive y direction, so this is in the positive y direction, and this is in the negative y direction. All right, so now we can actually start solving the problem. The first thing we're asked to calculate is the impact velocity, which I'm going to write as v sub f, f subscript for final, and a vector symbol over it because velocity is a vector. Before we do this calculation, I want to talk about what I mean by impact velocity. Sometimes impact velocity is described as 
the velocity the object had when it hit something. But then people will say, well, but then it hits the thing and the thing brings it to rest and changes the velocity, etc. And so the answer comes back, well, imagine the velocity the object had right before it had impact. But that gets a little bit confusing. Here's what I like to suggest. What velocity would this object have had at this location if it hadn't run into anything at all? Imagine you dug a hole or something. When the ball is at this level, what would have been the ball's velocity at this level if it hadn't hit anything? That's the impact velocity. All right, so let's calculate the impact velocity. We need to find the x and y components of that, so I'll prepare for those right here. Now, it turns out we're almost already halfway done with this because the x component of the acceleration is zero. The x component of the acceleration being zero means that the x component of the velocity isn't changing. That's what it means to have a zero acceleration component. If the x component of the velocity isn't changing, that means all we need to do is figure out the x component of the velocity at some instant in the problem, which we've already done. We found that at this instant, the x component of the velocity was 5 meters per second. Since there's no x component of acceleration, that means the x component of the velocity continues to be this value until all the way up to impact. So we can write that right here. So now we need to find the y component of the final velocity, which means the y component of the velocity at the time that the ball is at this location or this height. All right, so to do that, let's hop over to our y equations. Uh, this one involves velocity. That looks promising. Let me flip that up here so we can look at it. Well, we know the y component of the acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second per second. We know the initial y component of the velocity, 8.66 meters per second. Let's drop those in here. And this is as far as we can go for now because we don't know the time it takes for the ball to get from here to here. If we did know the time it took, if we knew the time at impact, we could plug in the time at impact, get the y component of the velocity at impact, which is what we're looking for as our v sub y final, and then we'd have the components, x and y components of the impact velocity. So let's set this aside for now and see if we can figure out the time it takes for the ball to get from here to here. So let's look at another equation. Let's look for another one that has time in it. Well, this one has time and these have time. These are the same equation. If I take this equation and subtract y sub 0 from both sides, then it would be gone from here, and over here I'd have y minus y sub 0. That's what's meant by delta y. So these are the same equation. I could work with either of them. They both have the time in them. I'm going to take this top one, and let me put it up here so we can look at it. Looking at this, we know a sub y. We know v sub y is 0. We're looking for the time t, and we also know delta y. Delta y is the change in y from this initial instant to the final instant. The change in y is this amount. It starts here at y level, it ends here at y level, so the change in y has an amount of 10 meters, and it's a negative change going from here to here. That change in y is in the negative y direction. Or to think of it another way, the y component of the displacement is in the negative y direction. It goes from here to here if we're concerned with y. That's negative because up is the positive y direction, so going from here to here would be a negative displacement, negative displacement component. All right, so we can plug in negative 10 meters for delta y. We can plug in 8.66 meters per second for v sub y is 0. We can plug in negative 9.8 meters per second per second for a sub y and rewrite this right here. This has a t and a t squared in it, so I'm going to rearrange this so I can use a quadratic formula. I'm going to add 10 meters to both sides, and I'll multiply this out. If we let the coefficient of the t squared term be capital A, the coefficient of the t term be capital B, and this constant term be capital C, then the quadratic formula says that t will equal negative capital B plus or minus the square root of capital B squared minus 4 times capital A times capital C, all divided by 2 times capital A. So you can either plug all these things in here and grind out the result and get your 2 times, which I'll write down in a moment, or if you have a fancy calculator, you can plug these a, b, and c terms into your graphing calculator routine and let it grind out the quadratic formula for you. Either way, we get these results.
Mathematically, both of these values of t correspond to a delta y of negative 10 meters, and hence to a y coordinate that is 10 meters below this location here. Now, this location here was at t equals 0, so this negative time value happened before that, so it's not directly relevant to the questions we're asking, although we'll return to it later. The time at which the ball hits the ground is represented by the 2.56 seconds. t equals 0 here, then 2.56 seconds later, it's at impact. So this is the time we want. This is the time at impact. We can plug this time in here and then grind out this result. And we get that the y component of the velocity at the time of impact is equal to negative 16.4 meters per second, or 16.4 meters per second downward. I've taken this result and rewritten it down here and added an f subscript to it because we were calling our impact velocity v final vector. So these are the x and y components of the impact velocity, which I've rewritten as a vector up here. So the impact velocity v final vector is 5.00 meters per second times i hat plus negative 16.4 meters per second times j hat where i hat is a unit vector in the positive x direction, and j hat is a unit vector in the positive y direction. From the components of the impact velocity, I can also calculate a magnitude and direction for the impact velocity. So here's the x component of the impact velocity. Here's the y component of the impact velocity. If I slide the y component over here, we see the x and y components of the impact velocity form the legs of a right triangle with the magnitude of the impact velocity being the hypotenuse. So I can find the magnitude of the impact velocity from the square root of the sums of the squares of those impact velocity components. So V sub final x would plug in here. V sub final y would plug in here. I square them, take the square root, and I get 17.1 meters per second for the magnitude of the impact velocity vector. For this direction, I can use the fact that the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now I'm going to try and find a positive angle for this, so I'm going to put the sides in absolute values. So V sub final Y corresponds to the opposite side, and if I just put absolute values around that, that'll just give me the amount of that side. V sub final x will give me the amount of this side if I put it in absolute values. I take the arc tangent of that and I get 73.0 degrees for the amount of this angle. What that means is that the direction of the impact velocity is 73 degrees from the horizontal uh, measured downward or 73 degrees below the horizontal. So I can take this information and summarize it up here. And here I've specified that the 73.0 degree angle is below the horizontal. Now that we've solved for the impact velocity, let's move on to the next part of the problem, to find the horizontal travel. That is, how far does this ball travel horizontally from this instant until impact? So we want to figure out this length L. We know that at time zero, the ball has an x component of the velocity of 5 meters per second. That's the horizontal velocity component. And we know that the x component of the acceleration is zero. So we know that the x component of the velocity doesn't change. So if the ball continues with an x component of velocity with this amount, a constant amount of 5 meters per second, all we need to do is multiply the 5 meters per second by the number of seconds that the ball takes to get from here to here to figure out how far it travels horizontally. To make that explicit, let me take the displacement component equation and rewrite it here in terms of delta x instead of delta y. And here I've noted that the x component of the acceleration is zero. So that kills off this term. So to find the change in x during the time that this object goes from here to here, we need to multiply the initial x component of the velocity by the time it's spent going from here to here. That time is 2.56 seconds. So if we plug in 5 meters per second, times 2.56 seconds, we'll get the change in x for that corresponding time, which will be this length L, so I'll write that right here. And that gives us L equals 12.8 meters, which I'll write right here. All right, so we've solved our problem. We found the impact velocity, and we found how far the object travels horizontally during its time of flight from this instant till impact.
Before finishing up, I want to do two more things. The first thing I want to do is show you a different way to find the y component of the impact velocity without first finding the time. And then the second thing I want to do is discuss this negative time. Another way to find the y component of the impact velocity is to use the last of the equations that I had originally written over here. This equation does not contain the time, and we'll see this equation will give us a way to calculate this y component of the impact velocity without first finding the time. All right, so here we go. We're going to consider the interval of motion from this instant until the instant of impact. So corresponding to that interval of motion, the change in y from here to impact is negative 10 meters, so I can put that here. The y component of the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second per second, so I can put that here. And the y component of the velocity at this initial instant is 8.66 meters per second, so I can put that here. Don't forget that we have to square that after we put it in. So if we plug all this in, and then take the square root, we're going to get two results, because remember, we take the square root of a positive number, we'll get a positive and negative answer. I'll write those right here. And we get plus or minus 16.46 meters per second. Now, which one do we take? Well, we remember the projectile is going through this trajectory, and at impact, it's on its way down. Down is the negative y direction, so we want v sub y equals negative 16.46 meters per second. When we round this, we get negative 16.5 meters per second. That differs just in this last decimal place from this answer here. The difference is due to rounding in the earlier calculation of this time. Note that this method allows us to calculate the y component of the impact velocity without first finding the time. So if we had done this at the very beginning and hadn't yet found the time, we could have gone up to here to this expression for the y component of the velocity as a function of time, plugged in the y component of the velocity at impact, and then if we had the initial y component of the velocity, which we do, and the y component of the acceleration, which we do, then we could have used this expression to solve for the time from this instant until impact. So that would be an alternate way also then to find the time without using the quadratic formula. Finally, I'd like to discuss this negative value for the time that we obtained earlier. Both these values for t were obtained by solving this equation with delta y equals negative 10 meters. That is, both of these values of t correspond to a y location that is 10 meters below this point. Now, the ball was at this location at t equals 0. So the 2.56 seconds represents the time after that location that the ball was at this level or at impact. But let's imagine running the clock backwards. And to imagine that a little better, let's imagine that our ground continues here, but then at this point we drop off a cliff and there's some deep pit over here. So we still have extended ground level, uh, but we've got some deep pit over here. And imagine the ball was launched from that deep pit. And at the instant that the ball is right here, which we're calling t equals zero, the ball has this velocity, magnitude 10 meters per second, direction of velocity 60 degrees above the horizontal. With those assumptions, imagining that this is part of some larger trajectory, this answer tells us that the ball was first at ground level 7.96 seconds before the time we're calling t equals zero, right here. So 7.96 seconds before the ball was right here, that's the first time it was at ground level if we imagine it was launched from some deep pit. We can take this further. Let's look at our velocity results. When the object was here at impact, it had a y component of velocity of negative 16.46 meters per second, negative corresponding to downward, or so negative 16.5 or negative 16.4, depending on how the rounding happened. Great. But what about the positive answer? Well, the positive answer refers to the other time the ball was at this level, if we imagine some extended trajectory. So. 7.96 seconds before our t equals zero time, the ball, when it was at this level on its way up, had a velocity component upward of positive 16.4 or 16.5 meters per second. Meanwhile, the x component of the velocity is not changing, not before, not after. As long as this thing is in free fall, governed by an acceleration that's entirely downward, 
the velocity in the x direction of this thing will not change. So we could actually use that to find the velocity, the x and y components of the velocity of the ball when it was here. The x component of the velocity would be the same. The y component of the velocity would have the same amount but flipped upward. So we'd have the same triangle but with an angle up this way. So the direction of the velocity, instead of being 73 degrees below the horizontal, would be 73 degrees above the horizontal. So the velocity of the ball at this location would be 17.1 meters per second magnitude and direction 73 degrees above the horizontal. And that would be at a time 7.96 seconds before our t equals zero instant here. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.